Hi, Diago. Ms. Plagman just has been saying horrible things about you. Um, and now what if you go back and watch this? You're all going to hear that. Okay. Today's lesson, 6.4, has to do with highway curves. Now, there's two situations. There's unbanked, which means it's flat, and then there's banked, which it means as an angle. Obviously, banked is a little bit more challenging. In the past, when they've had situations like this on AP exams as FRQs, these are the type of problems where you're going to have to rearrange everything and it's going to have to all be in terms of variables. And that's what they're also going back towards. So you don't want to just like plug your number in right away. So what happens is when we drive around a curve, and we see in the picture here, so it says an example of circular dynamics occurs when an automobile rounds a curve. So this example it says to the left, in such a situation you may feel that feel your thrust outwards towards the right side of the car, but there is no uh, mysterious centrifugal force pulling on you. What's happening is that you tend to move in a straight line, whereas the car has begun to fo follow a curved path. To make you go in the curved path, the seat has begun to follow the curved path. So anyway, when we're looking at this, we're going to do just like we did all along. We're going to draw our free body diagram. Remember, we only have external forces in our free body diagram. We never draw a centripetal force in it. When we're doing a problem, Newton's second law, F is equal to ma, that a is the centripetal acceleration. Okay. The key to this, again, is to draw the free body diagram. Now, what also makes the problems challenging and not challenging is going to be friction, okay? Because now we have surfaces in contact, we're going to have normal forces, we're going to have frictional forces and everything like that. So if the frictional force is insufficient, the car will tend to move nearly in a straight line, and then you'll see that in skin marks. So this... Those of you who were last year, when the police come in, and we didn't have a chance to do it, maybe we'll do it this year, when the police come in and they recreate a car accident, you know, when they're looking at, they use everything that we use in physics, whether it be the kinematic equations, they look at the coefficient of friction between the tires and the road, they know the coefficient of friction for every single road in Jupiter, they also know whether the coefficient of friction, whether it's wet or dry, so a lot of... Looking at skid marks is an essential when they're recreating an accident to try and figure out whenever someone, there's a fatality, they have to do that. It's the you know, law to recreate the accident, try and figure out how fast someone were, was going. So if the tires don't slip, the friction is kinetic, which is bad in two ways. The kinetic frictional force is smaller than the static, and the static frictional force can port towards the center of the circle. So here's our first example with... Um, a car where it's unbanked, which is actually easier. So this says a 1,000-kilogram car rounds a curve on a flat road, and they tell us the radius with a speed of 14. Now, you experience this when you get off Indian Town Road. So you notice that almost all the exits are curved. So you're going to experience this when you get off a lot of the exits, especially the one here on Indian Town Road. And they have recommended speeds because a lot of times, and we haven't learned this yet when we study center of mass, a car has a center of mass, and what happens with SUVs is they have a higher center of mass, and we're going to see later on that those cars have a tendency to topple over. So a lot of times, the place where you might see cars that go off the road is going to be on an exit ramp where it's curved because they exceed the, sp the speed limit, and if it's a car that, again, has a high center of mass, um, it's going to happen. All right, will the car follow the curve or will it skid? Assume, A, the pavement is dry and the coefficient of static friction, and if the pavement is icy, they give you this. All right, so the first thing we, ha we have to do is we have to draw a free body diagram. Um, so obviously the weight goes down, the normal force acts perpendicular to the surfaces in contact, and we do have friction. So we do just like we did all along. We sum forces vertically, and again, that's going to be zero. On the AP test... Just get in the habit, even though I always go up and to the right, it, a lot of times, and you know, I'm not sure how picky the grader is going to be, just go ahead and write is equal to zero, okay? Because I've noticed lately in the FRQs, they actually have that written like that. So you want to make sure you get that point because you're going to get a point for that. 
So in this particular case, we see that the normal force would be equal and opposite the weight. When we sum forces, rate and the R just means radially, okay? So when we sum forces, summation of F is equal to MA, and that's equal to the centripetal acceleration is MD squared over R. And, you know, we can, and then when we, um, what did they sum for here? Oh, they just did the MD squared over R part, and they still have to end up solving for mu. So then they substituted one and the other. Now, this is, this is okay. A lot of times if they do a problem like this, they might do it without friction, and then what's the difference with friction? Now, these are the problems that become a little bit more challenging because of the angle. It's really not hard. The, these types of problems, this is a banked curve. You just have to, have to be patient with your variables. The key to doing these problems, obviously, is just like anything else, you're going to draw your free body diagram. Now, the biggest mistake that people make in this is, and I've mentioned this when we started this unit, is when you're, it's all about your sign convention. So, which way is the centripetal force acting? It's acting towards the center of the circle. It's, it is not acting perpendicular and parallel to the surfaces in contact. So back in the 80s, and we're going to do it for practice, they gave an FRQ like this, which when you think about it, an FRQ like this really isn't that difficult, but if you have this sign convention wrong, the whole problem is wrong, okay? Because we're so in the habit of making our sign convention when we have um, something that's on an angle perpendicular parallel to the surfaces in contact. So when we sum our, so because the centripetal acceleration acts towards the center of the circle, our other, so we're just, that's going to be one, and the other sign convention is going to be perpendicular. And that's the key to these problems. So this would be my free body diagram, which would just have my weight acting down, and it would have my normal force perpendicular surfaces in contact. Then I would redraw, now this must not have friction in it. It doesn't. So this one's actually, there's no friction, which makes this easy, but we're obviously going to do them with friction, okay? So now, I would have to, so this is easier. So this would be something, this was like an FRQ, so you're going to just sum forces, but then when you do friction, the friction acts what? Doesn't the friction act parallel to the surfaces in contact? So what does that mean before you sum forces if the frictional force acts parallel? What does that mean? What am I going to have to do with the friction before I break, before I sum forces? I'm going to have to break the frictional force up into horizontal and vertical components. Do you see what I mean? And we are not used to doing that. Okay. So here's the main thing. So what we're going to do is we are going to work on the homework problems because I think that will make it easier. All right, so we're going to look at 16 on the back. Because because th this one um, is banked and it has friction. Okay, so it says a 1,200-kilogram car. A radius 60 seconds, 67 meters. And the banking angle is 12 degrees. Is, um, if the car is traveling at... Okay, we're missing the speed. Uh, typo. All right, so the speed's supposed to be 95. It's kilometers per hour, and then we'll convert it. Um, and then it should say, mm, I don't know what it's supposed to say. Something will frictional force, what will the frictional force be required? If so, how much and in what direction? Um, so we have to solve for, yeah, we have to solve for F of F. So, sorry about that. All right, where do we start? Well, we start with our free body diagram. So this is my car. Um, 
This number 16 is supposed to actually have two parts. The first part we're supposed to do without friction, and the second part we're supposed to do with friction. All right, so without friction, here's our normal force. We, we're, I'm recording, and we need to stop talking, please. And here is my weight. My, of, my, this is my sign convention. So I would definitely write my sign convention, and this is theta. Okay? So which forces are not going in this direction? That would be the normal force. So I'm going to redraw it, and I'm going to break my normal force up into its component. So I have the weight going down. And then when I break that up, it's going to end up being Fn cosine theta and Fn sine theta. Okay. So I would convert my kilometers per hour to meters per second. And one hour is 3,600 seconds, and that's equal to 26.39. <clears throat> I'll sum forces vertically because I know that zero summation of F of Y is equal to MA, which is zero, which would be Fn cosine theta minus MG. So Fn cosine theta is equal to MG. So F of N is equal to Mg cosine theta. Now what they might ask you is, if you were doing a problem without friction, they might ask you to solve for the normal force in, ter in terms of like Mg theta and all that other stuff. And again, this is the tendency now on FRQs. They want everything in terms of variables without numbers, not just plugging numbers in equations, which obviously this is an equation that... Um, <coughs> that, you know, you would have to do this by summing forces. Okay, when we sum forces horizontally, that would be F and sine theta. And again, we haven't done friction yet. And there is going to be an acceleration. So now if I want to solve for... What am I solving for? Um, there is no friction in this problem. Um, I want to find... Um, I'm not sure. I have to figure out what this problem originally asked for. There's, there's a lot missing from this problem. <coughs> I think we're solving for the normal force. That's what we're solving for because we don't know it here and we don't know it here. That's what we're solving for. Yeah. So what I would do is we want to find what that force is. So we'd rearrange this equation and I would substitute one equation equal to the other. Well, so we, 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 know the math. we have Fn equals that and we can plug in numbers. It's 12,000 times my point divided by the cosine of 12. Uh, I think there, there was another part of this, and I'm not sure what it is. I think we need to find, I don't know, but there was another part, like solving for stuff. <coughs> and I don't know, I only have one answer here. Anyway, let me set up what it looks like for friction, and I'm going to tell you all the corrections because I have to look from the book. I got these from another book, and I have to look up and see what the problems say. All right, so now if we have friction, this is a great video for Tiago. Um, <laughs> I think I'm afraid to upload this to the Internet. Um, <laughs> here's my, yeah, I'm not, I don't think I'm going to upload this. Uh, so this is what my free body diagram is going to look like. 
But now when I start breaking stuff into components, I have to break up the friction force and the normal force, and that's why this gets a little bit more complicated. So, and again, it's really not any hard. The problem with this is when you get to the point with all the algebra, we have to simplify everything. So this is going to be um, fn cosine. That's going to be the same, fn cosine theta. This is going to be um, mg. This is going to be... Um, f of f sine theta, and then we're going to have f n sine of theta, and we're going to have f of f cosine of theta. And that's our free body diagram, and we're going to end up solving for f of f. That's what we're going to end up doing. And that was what the answer is at the end, that 9.8 times, and it's supposed to be 10 to the third power. Wow, there's so many typos on this. Um, that's the answer for the frictional force at an angle. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and look at the problem to make those corrections. So let me put this up. All right. Um, I will try to figure out where I got these problems from, and I will, re I will edit this and put it on headline. But this is all the information that you need as far as the numbers are concerned. But obviously the wording of the question, especially for number 16, we need to know that. So I will I apologize. There's a lot of typos on stuff in this chapter, but I kind of understand why. Um, but I'll get that to you. Uh,